homeless little kids, when I was younger, this world seemed like a magical place, full of undiscovered things to see, new people to meet, and unlimited places to explore. I could be whoever and whatever I wanted, limited only by the constraints of my own imagination. Everyday experiences, things we take for granted now, were fascinating beyond means, because children have the unique gift of appreciating everything in the moment. By not being bound to problems in the past or worries from the future, they are able to live each and every moment now, in the present, where we all reside, but nobody seems to really be living. As I got older, I started to live less and less in the now, rather than appreciating and making the most of each moment that I was living in. I was preoccupied with the past and anticipating the future, filling my head with questions and regrets about things that I could no longer change because they had already happened. I would break down sobbing on the floor, have anxiety attacks, and work myself into hysteria over things that hadn't even happened and might not ever happen. It turns out I'm not alone either. On average, the human mind wanders 47% of the time. Nearly half the time we spend on this earth, we're thinking about something other than what we're currently doing. Mind wandering away from the present isn't just frequent, it's ubiquitous. It pervades basically everything we do. Surely, you might be thinking, well, isn't this a good thing? If we're thinking about something happy, it should make us happier. But the fact of the matter is, our brains often wander to our worries, our anxieties, our regrets, our fears. In a study done by the Harvard Research Center, it was found that even when people are thinking about something happy, they're still significantly less happy than if they were just focused on the present moment. Now, we can use this knowledge to better our own life. If we try to focus on the present moment and find happiness within the lives we are currently living in. If we live our life with the mindset that, once I do this, I'll be happy, we'll never truly be happy. Living your life like this is like running a race with no finish line. There are some people who actually like running. I know, I know, it's hard to believe, but trust me, they do exist. I, for one, am not one of them. But even the most diehard fans of running can't keep going forever. Nobody can. Sure, you might feel a small amount of satisfaction as you pass mile 10, and again when you pass mile 20, but you'll never be truly satisfied until you pass the finish line. And the sad part is, you never will, because it's forever changing. As you progress through this race, the finish line keeps getting farther and farther away. And just like this endless race, if you live your life seeking happiness in the future, you will constantly be in a state of exhaustion, searching for something that you will never reach, because there will always be something bigger, something better to strive for. Where we're at, what we have, will never seem like enough. I was lucky enough to realize this a few years ago due to a not-so-pleasant situation. Like I was saying earlier, my life was consumed with regrets from the past and worries from the futures. Life started to speed up each year, feeling shorter and shorter, until one day, everything stopped. Sixteen letters shifted my perspective. Six syllables transformed my way of thinking, and five words changed my life. I have a brain tumor. Those words, leaving my mom's mouth, did more for me than even she knows. In that moment, every fragment of my brain that was lodged in either the past or the future was pulled back to home base with so much force it could have knocked me over. For the first time in years, me and all my thoughts were residing in the same moment together, sitting outside, near the grass, surrounded by the most important people in my life, my family, and nothing outside of that mattered. My mom ended up being okay, but I'm not going to lie, it was one hell of an emotional summer, but the best summer nonetheless. I lived each day, each moment, like it was the last one that I had to share with my mom. And I'm so thankful that I was able to experience that, because it has truly changed my perspective on life. I now live like a child again, finding joy in and appreciating the simplest of things, things I used to take for granted. I use my imagination to make the most of everything. Getting ready for school turns into a secret agent mission, racing against the clock. Instead of doing chores, I'm a daydreaming Cinderella who just hasn't met their prince. And let it be known that math homework is a whole lot more interesting when finding the answer to a problem means you just discovered a secret code that saves humanity. Some might call me childish, naive, or immature, and I'm not going to lie, at times I can be all three of those things. 
but you can't call me unhappy because I'm having the time of my life. Sure, I still have times when I'm serious. In fact, I love nothing more than having a deep, meaningful conversation with someone. And I know that life isn't happy all the time, but at any given moment, we, as humans, have the ability to make ourselves just a little bit happier. I know it sounds far-fetched, but I'm telling you, I, a high schooler from Minnesota, have discovered the secret to happiness, and it's much less complicated than you may think. So without further ado, the secret to being happy is simply being happy. You just need to accept what you have and the situation you're currently in as being all you need to be content with your life. Smile, be thankful, and be happy. I know, I know, I'll admit, it does sound ridiculous and it's pretty anticlimactic, but I guarantee it works. Trust me when I say life is not always happy. We all experience death, heartbreak, and loneliness, and so many more less than desirable emotions. Because we're human, it's part of life. I still have really bad anxiety, and sometimes I have debilitating attacks. I'm not saying deny all other emotions, because it's important to feel sadness, pain, and anger. But you don't need to let these emotions linger longer than necessary. If you simply realize that the moment you're currently living in is enough, you'll be much happier because you can't truly be happy with what you may one day have unless you accept and appreciate everything you have right now. For the sake of proving my point, let's all partake in a little over-exaggerated exercise. Everyone give me your biggest smile. All right, for those of you who aren't smiling because you think you're a tough guy or trying to be cool, just try it because I guarantee it's worth it. So let's try again. Give me your biggest smile. Much better. Okay, so now for the harder part. Think about everything good going on in this moment and really, really appreciate each of them. You're alive. Literally, the greatest thing you could possibly experience in life is something you're experiencing now and every second of your life. You're sitting in this room, or for the people watching online, you're sitting on your couch at home, you're breathing, and you are living. So cherish this experience. Life is not about trying to make the bad moments disappear. It's about making the most of the rest of them, because every moment is its own unique experience. Nothing exactly the same will ever happen again. So cherish as much of this life as you can, because you only get one. Thank you.